Hello, this is Ron Mertens from OLED Info and also from Graphene Info, which is a web publication and service provider to the graphene industry. This presentation will provide an introduction to graphene and graphene applications for the OLED market. In this presentation, we'll give an introduction to graphene and explain why this material may indeed be a wonder material, as some suggest. We look into the many applications that may benefit from graphene and also understand why graphene hasn't yet met its potential. We'll see what kind of market exists today for graphene and finally see what roles graphene has in the OLED market as an ITO alternative and as an OLED display backplane. Graphene is a very simple material. It is a single two-dimensional film of carbon atoms arranged in hexagons. It looks like a chicken wire. Graphite, which has been mined and used for thousands of years, is actually made from stacked sheets of graphene, held together in a weak force. In 2004, graphene was isolated for the first time by researchers in the UK. Those researchers started to perform experiments on this new material, and their discovery led to a Nobel Prize in 2010. Graphene is the world's strongest material, and the most conductive one, for both electricity and heat. It also has many unique properties. A single sheet of graphene is flexible, transparent, and totally impermeable. As we'll see soon, this leads to some very interesting applications. As you can see, graphene is a simple material made entirely from carbon atoms that can be considered to be a basic building block to many applications, as we're going to see next. Graphene is indeed the wonder material, and in the past few years, researchers and companies all over the world have found out exciting new applications that can benefit from this newly discovered material. Let's start with composite materials. Adding even tiny traces of graphene to plastics, rubber, metals, carbon fibers, and other materials can make them stronger, more conductive, and more durable. Graphene can also be used to enhance 3D printing, and enable functional printing, which means that you can print conductive wires or even batteries all in one 3D printing process. Using graphene for energy generation devices, mostly solar panels, is another interesting research area. Graphene-enabled panels may be highly efficient, but it seems that commercialization is still far off. Graphene-enhanced batteries may deliver up to four times the capacity compared to current technologies. But this is not all, graphene can also greatly enhance the battery's charging time, which may bridge the gap between batteries and supercapacitors. Talking about supercapacitors, graphene is also used in such devices to increase capacity and make them closer to batteries in that regard. Graphene supercapacitors are now beginning to enter the market. Graphene is also proving to be an exciting sensor platform, and we're starting to see commercial activity in this field too mostly in biosensors. Graphene's large surface-to-area ratio, unique optical properties, and excellent electrical and thermal conductivity is great for sensor functions. And there are many more exciting graphene applications. In fact, it is quite difficult to find an industry that is not applicable for graphene. Of course, there are still many challenges before graphene can actually live up to its promise. First of all, production of real high-quality single graphene sheets is still very expensive, and no one is making such sheets for commercial applications yet. Many companies do offer graphene products, and one of the problems is understanding what materials are exactly on offer. There's a serious lack of standardization. One example is the number of sheets. Should five layers of graphene sheets be called graphene, or graphite, or multi-layer graphene? And what about defects and size and shapes? Graphene does not have a band gap, and so you cannot use it to make a transistor. There are several ways to open a band gap in graphene, but it's not clear whether this will actually be viable for commercial use. There's so much graphene hype in so many industries that it's quite impossible for the material to actually live up to its promise. Moving from hype to reality is a major challenge. The graphene market is very small but there sure is a lot of activity. Currently, graphene flakes are in mass production, and the global production capacity is over a thousand tons per year. 
the largest producers are in China. Graphene sheets are only produced for R&D applications in low volume. Most of those graphene flakes go into graphene composites. There are several high-end sport-related products, such as tennis rackets, skis, and bicycle wheels, that use graphene composites, mostly carbon fibers reinforced with graphene. Graphene inks and 3D printing filaments are also on the market from several vendors, with some commercial applications. One of the first proposed applications for graphene was electrodes for touch panels, an ITO alternative. Such panels are already in production in China, although it seems that interest in this area is not as big as was expected. Energy storage, both batteries and supercapacitors, is a great graphene application. And these products are now entering the market. In total, we see companies and governments investing billions of dollars in graphene research. Some examples include the European Union $10U billion graphene flagship initiative. And the UK, the birthplace of graphene, had invested close to a billion dollars in graphene research centers. IBM announced a $3 billion research project to find a replacement for silicon in chips, and graphene is a top contender. Dozens of other companies, including Intel, Samsung, LG, and Nokia, and even Apple, have active research in graphene. As I said before, the market itself is still very small. It is estimated at less than 50 million at the material level in 2015. Most of the production is performed at small graphene-focused companies. One of the first applications targeted by graphene researchers was transparent conductors for touchscreens, an ITO alternative. Graphene is indeed a great transparent conductor, and it is flexible, so this makes sense especially for flexible displays. There was a lot of hype a few years ago, and graphene has some great attributes for touchscreens, but it seems that currently the market favors silver-based solutions, such as silver nanowires. ITO is also currently used as a transparent conductor in OLED lighting devices, and we have seen some interesting development activities that adopt graphene instead. Finally, graphene can also be used as the transparent electrode in OLED displays. In 2014, FlexEnable, previously known as Plastic Logic, demonstrated the world's first display that uses a graphene electrode. That particular display was an ink display, but FlexEnable is also developing an OLED display with graphene electrodes. The last graphene application we'll discuss is a backplane material to drive OLED displays. All OLEDs today are made using LTPS backplanes, except for LG's OLED TVs, which use an oxide TFT backplane. Companies are looking for alternatives, especially for flexible displays, as current backplane technologies are not best suited for flexible OLED processes. Current backplane materials include silicon, oxide metals, organic transistors, and carbon nanotubes based TFTs. OTFTs and CNTs are in development by several companies. Graphene is an excellent conductor, but as it has no band gap, it cannot be used as a backplane material. But as we discussed before, there are some options to open a band gap in graphene. In early 2015, FlexEnable joined the EU Graphene flagship project with an aim to find a solution to the band gap problem. One of the possible solutions, by the way, is to use a different 2D graphene-like material that has an inherent band gap, such as molybdenum disulfide. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Goodbye.